Point Ellis House really stands as one of those early examples of early architecture in the city, um, the kinds of values that people placed uh, making their life in this colonial society. Point Ellis House is really a gem because it provides that whole context from the family history, the objects, the, the landscape itself. And so it's not just the house, but it's, it's the whole context of which the house is situated is what, what makes Point Ellis House really particularly special. One of the most frequently asked questions we have here at Point Ellis House is, is it haunted? And so of course we always say, well, it depends on where you're coming from or what stories you've heard or maybe what evidence you can collect. But if people come to Point Ellis House because they're curious about the ghosts, then that's a great thing because anytime we can get people in here and get them hooked on the stories of this place, be they ghostly or otherwise, is always a good thing. Point Ellis House is a very old place dating back to the early 1860s. Along that stretch of the, the waterway, there were lots of well-known and fairly wealthy families. The O'Reillys bought it in 1867, and later they added to it. And the house that we know today is, is largely their creation from 1867 mm -hmm. until they sold it to the government in the 1970s. Any notable family in town, any family in town back in the 1800s, would be buried here at Ross Bay Cemetery, with a few exceptions because this was the only major cemetery in the city at that time. The O'Reilly's is a beautiful monument, brought in from London, in fact, um, but it's not on the main roadway, unlike the Dunsmuirs, and so perhaps people don't see the O'Reilly monument um, quite as readily, but they wanted people to see their monument. They wanted people to know through time that they had been prominent people, and their names are all there, Peter O'Reilly. Carolyn O'Reilly, although she's not buried here, she died in England and is buried there. And their related families and the children as well, Kathleen O'Reilly especially. The O'Reillys had bought a house off from the main part of downtown. The people around them were wealthy neighbors and it was an enclave. But here at Ross Bay Cemetery, everybody is equal. Beyond Belief Paranormal Events team is here and they have all kinds of equipment set up inside the house and they also have a spiritual medium on their team and we're going to try and see if we can collect some evidence and find out a little bit more about uh, what kind of spirits may reside here or may pass through here. Beyond Belief is a, is a paranormal investigating team. Our primary focus is to help um, homeowners or people you know, living in a property or working in a property that are having paranormal um, experiences and they don't know who to turn to and, and they're, they're frightened. So that's our primary uh, work and we do that free of charge. So literally somebody can reach out to us, we'll do a consultation and then we'll determine the next best steps from, from there. Um, it's an immense privilege to be invited in, to be um, trusted, um, to be able to investigate and it's a privilege from you know the, the, the spirits that you know um, do put up with us and do communicate with us occasionally and um, so I would say it's just uh, you know it's just a privilege. It's amazing I mean to be able to get access to a place like this is uh, is fantastic I mean uh, just from its history alone, those of us who love history. It's a very historic home. It's one of the oldest homes in Victoria uh, in its original state. What's unique about it, it does have a paranormal history, at least lots of evidence where people have experienced uh, unique circumstances uh, in the property. When I first got to know the O'Reillys quite well, John and Ines O'Reilly, Ines was the one that really was keen on getting the place open as a, as a historic site. And this was the, the story that she told me very early on, in about 1971. And John had gone out for the day, 
Uh, she was at home by herself. The house was open as a museum, but they didn't get many visitors then. And Inez and John did a lot of the work themselves. So one day she was up a ladder over the front door. And there's a beautiful carriageway, a graveled carriageway there. And she was up the ladder over the front door when she heard a car pull into the parking lot that then was not paved. It was graveled too. And she saw two couples get out, middle-aged. And as they approached her, she said, oh, I'm so sorry, but the house is open, but I, I'm busy for a moment. Just give me a, a minute, but go inside the house, make yourselves at home, and I'll come in and give you a tour. Oh, fine, in they went. But she forgot about them. And she was so absorbed in her painting. And finally, 20 minutes later, perhaps, they came wandering out, and she was so embarrassed. She scrambled down from the ladder and said, oh, I, I'm so sorry. I, didn't mean to, to ignore you, but if you have time, please come back in the house. I'll give you the tour now. But they didn't seem to be upset at all. And they said, well, really, there's no need for that because the nice young lady in the house gave us the tour. Well, Inez truly was there by herself that day, and they had no employees at all. And she said, um, can you describe her? Well, they, they described a young woman. And Inez said, well, do you, do you have a moment? Can you come inside the house? Maybe show me what what you heard from her. And so they all trooped inside, and, and the, one of the couples was really quite keen to, to show her all the things that the guide had showed her, and Inez was learning things that she had no knowledge of, that only somebody who had lived in the house would have known. And it got a little bit spooky. She, she knew the place was haunted, but suddenly they arrived at the bedroom of Kathleen O'Reilly. Now, Kathleen was the aunt of Inez's husband. Kathleen had died in the house in 1945. And when they arrived at that room, one of the women said, Oh, look, there's the dress. Yes, said Inez. Yes, yes, the, the, the lady that was showing us around was wearing that dress. It was a blue, long ball gown. And suddenly I, Inez realized what was going on. She herself had set up that room as a display. It was Kathleen's bedroom. And many of Kathleen's dresses and other gowns were in storage in cedar cabinets upstairs in the attic. She had chosen that one because it looked so nice and had draped it over the bed, rather artistically, just as if Kathleen might have laid it there. It had been there for several months. Kathleen, who was definitely not in the house, at least alive, as far as Inez knew, but somehow Kathleen had come to life in that dress and had given those people the tour. Ina's never tired of telling that story. And although people in the museum community poo-pooed this and said, oh, you're making this up, um, Ina's was never willing to admit that she had made it up. So that was my first true knowledge of ghosts at Point Ellis House. We should tell them why we're wearing masks. They might be <laughs> wondering idea. why, and that might make them nervous. So if you can see us, you might see that we have some face coverings on. And this is because in our time and space, we have this, we have a virus. It's a little bit like the Spanish flu. You might have been familiar with that at the time. So we have these masks on to keep us safe. So please don't be alarmed. If you can see us, and you can see we've got these face coverings on. Yes. Do you need any help? We've got the bells here. Could you ring one of the servants' bells and we'll come and help you? Jack, we're just by your bedroom. Are you here? We're just walking through this beautiful home. We mean you no harm. We don't want to frighten you. But we would love you to come close and talk to us. If Kathleen's here, I believe that this was your bedroom, Kathleen. I know this might seem to be a lot of people in your home. 
I hope you don't mind, but we were invited in so that we could come and talk to you. Can you make a noise? If you're here and you want to reach out and touch one of us, you have our permission to do that. Let's stand up, grab the table. If you could find a way to communicate with us, we would be very grateful. You know, we've heard stories of visitors coming through this beautiful home and being greeted by a lady in a blue dress. And you've shown these visitors round with so much pride and so much love. Can you show us around this beautiful home? That to me seems like an anomaly in the, in the camera. Yeah, yeah, it's a lens flare. Definitely. It could be from the light, the light. is yeah. creating a spot. Yeah, it's a lens yeah. flare. We would debunk that and say <laughs> it is nothing paranormal. But, but we did get uh, a strange, this was illuminating for some reason on one of the days that I believe it was Saturday morning. We had a security camera set right there. Sorry, I'm just going to stop the recording. Um, it was set on that table facing this direction, so it caught all of this. And at about eight, I think it was around 8.30 in the morning, it, this was all illuminating. And it was pitch black in here. There was no reason. So the only thing we could figure is that light's coming through here. And something was causing it to light up. The whole week, I've seen different times of the motion sensor going off because of shadow changes, not necessarily something paranormal, mostly not. But that was unique, didn't pick that up the entire week except for once. And there's lots of motion sensors that went off. And there would be nothing coming through from like no, the sun from, from those way. windows. And it's right in here. Right. So it's reflecting so it's, something it's happening. There. And there was nobody in the any of the staff or anybody that and entered. so even if there was somebody on the ground shining a flashlight through they're not going to pick that up because the blinds are down exactly yeah and we had the this same day this is the sound that was picked up i figured it out when you pull this lever yeah that that's exactly yeah. the sound twice Two different times. I never heard it all week. It was only one morning. Yeah. Two different times it made that sound. So we've got that. So something like that, it would have happened maybe 10, 20, 30 times a day. Maybe at that very, you know, point in the day, somebody would have come through the door. So that could be residual. But then there are some very interesting accounts where you've got, like the, like the lady who was in very physical form who showed a group to maybe people that were coming and, and wanting to have a visit of the house. And she showed them around like a tour guide. That to me sounds like an intelligent spirit, somebody who's very comfortable in this present dimension and probably very comfortable in her own di dimension, but there's an interaction there. So yeah. that's fascinating to me. And if we could get some connection with perhaps who she is and you know we know that Kathleen spent all of her life here and probably is very connected to this space yeah so and, and maybe there, it's and there's her. been some sadness I'm sure mm. is here as well with the loss of life with their, their sister her sister Mary passed away in the house apparently 
they're just doing some research, but the original family of the Wallaces mm -hmm. lost, looks like they lost a child right. here as well. And they were only here for a few years before they sold the home to the O'Reillys. So, you know, they've got a mixture. And of course, uh, Judge Peter O'Reilly, that was his bedroom over there. Um, he sustained health problems yeah. and she basically, Kathleen ended up looking after yeah. him. And he was pretty much died, I think, of a broken heart. Uh, his, when his wife passed away, that was... Do we hear you that? hear that? Okay, let's just with my cold hands. Pardon. With your cold hands. <laughs> We're reaching out to the spirits of Point Alice. We're asking that you come forward and communicate with us in this way. We invite you to use our energy and the energy of the space to talk to us. We're here with respect and mean no harm, okay? Kathleen, if you're here, can you come forward? If Kathleen's not here, is Peter here? Whoever was communicating with these three lovely ladies earlier you said that you'd be happy to participate in something like this. Can you come forward now? We're inviting you to use our energy. Step forward, build your energy up and move the glass for us. With well, this hand's tingling. Can you push the glass? It doesn't matter which way you push it. You can twist it or you can push it. I can feel slight little kind of mm. wobbles and we're asking for you to move the, here we go, move yeah, the seems glass. It seems difficult at first, but it will get easier. Thank you. Can you continue on doing this? Good job. This is a way that we can talk to you. It's a way that we can ask questions and get some answers. And it might seem strange at first, but it's okay. Oh, no. Perfect. Keep going. Good job. Hello. That's Elena. Do you want to go and see one of the, one of us? One of the of us? <laughs> <laughs> Someone else. How about back to center? So the center of the table. That's it, keep going, keep going. It'll get easier. God, you've gone that far before, you can do it again. I know you're strong from all the devices you've been setting off. You can do this too. Carry on, keep pushing the glass for us, please. Can you 
a step closer. Thank you. I can feel you close. Feel that you had a gentle energy. Thank you. Keep on going. It almost seems like, could it be a child? So tentative. It feels adult. Are you a grown up man? Not a child, no. Thank you. Did you used to live in this house? Thank you. Are you a member of the O'Reilly family? Thank you. Mm -hmm. She's picked his own, yes. Well, at least I got a rise out of him <laughs> by <laughs> suggesting he might be a child. Because he was so tentative. Oh. <laughs> Is this Peter? Thank you. Peter, is there anything that you'd like to, for us to ask you so that you can talk to us? Is there something that you want to? Peter, are there other members of the family here? Are you, are you happy here? Is that why you stay here? Peter, can you see us? Do you want to make me no, since Elena seems to be yes? <laughs> if, if the answer is no, if you can move it towards Diana here. Can you see us? I feel that you're here in this room with us, but can you see us? Okay. Can you feel us? Can you hear us? Definitely. So there is one man in this room apart from you, Peter. Can you move the glass towards where that man is standing? So you can see us? Tricky. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he felt where Jeff was. I don't maybe. know. Oh. <laughs> or heard. So Peter, um Okay. <laughs> is uh, is Kathleen with you? Is uh, Catherine with you? So um, very often a lady in a blue dress is seen. Is that Kathleen? Thank you. 
So do you like the people that come to visit your beautiful home? Do you know what we're doing here this evening? Do you know what we're trying to do? So we're trying to talk to whoever still resides here, like you, Peter, like Kathleen. And we're trying to raise funds to keep this beautiful house in good work in order. Do you approve? <laughs> do you think that everybody who watches this video should donate to your beautiful home? Thank you. Okay, I'm going to call it so that we get some of the footage, okay? Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Mm -hmm. What you did was amazing. Yes. Totally appreciate that. Close the it's done. Ooh. Nice. Woo. Ooh. <laughs> Mine are hot with the oh. spirit. Peter oh, was spirit. <laughs> Peter was standing so close. So so close. E37. E37? Correct. Let's see what happens. If there's anybody here, any the O'Reilly family or any any family member or person connected to this home, if you're down in that hallway, this camera that Elena's holding might be able to see you. We saw somebody in the hallway just to the entranceway of the uh your living room over there if that's one of the o'reilly family or wallace family could you touch any of those devices that are on the floor they're glowing red you'll see them they won't hurt you they're just sensors is what they're called if you touch them they might be able to tell us you're there Icy chill in here. Yeah. Oh, sweet. We we know you're in the kitchen and scullery, but we would love for you to come and be in the hallway. We saw and spoke with Peter earlier. Could have been just because Jeff was working down there and drew interest. Yeah. And it's kind of like standing, kind of watching what you were doing because you had all your gear down there. Could have been the, said the camera equipment caught the attention. Why are going power on here. Why don't you go sit in front of that mirror? That one? Yeah. Well, let's see what happens. You'll get me. <laughs> now, if there's anybody else in the house that'd like to join us out here in the hallway, that way we can see you. We have a camera that can potentially pick you up where we can't see you with our own eyes. Is there anybody in the house that can like make their presence known out here with us? Spent some time to come and see you. You can also touch those two devices on the floor. We're not asking you to do tricks. Please forgive us if you think so. It's just simply a way to communicate with you. Uh, that way we, we know you're here with us. And I hope you're aware we can't see you with our own eyes or even hear you with our own ears. Unless you really try. 
We've got a camera that might be able to see you. Forgive us if we're intruding on your space. We're just trying to learn from you, get to meet you, be able to tell your story. And help you keep your home here. Do you know your home is a historic site? No other places like it anywhere in BC. Feels like someone's touching my leg. This side. My right leg by my knee. Nothing dangling and touching it. It was just lightly like. Is there somebody right here? If that's you, Peter. Maybe reach out and touch Blake on his shoulder, on his right shoulder. Yeah, bring it on up. We'll leave these behind us. Okay. We'll do an EVP session in the scullery where we've had activity. In the, in the residence. You've got somebody there? It was right above the bathtub. My, oh! I just, that's happening so often today. It's strange. What kind of malfunction would do that? It's battery. The battery starts getting low, sometimes that's an issue. But they're all were charged, everything was... And that started as soon as we turned it on. As soon as we turned it on throughout the day, there's been activity on it. And it's intermittent, it's not like it's... Usually if it's a battery issue, it'll just start doing something in a... In a ran, not a random way, but there'd be a rhythm to it. Yeah. And it would just stay like that. That's what I get with the REM pods. They get too low on power. Oh, that's, right. that's over to your left. That's over here. If there's somebody over there, oh. if you're over by the counter near the entrance to the pantry, I'm just gonna press this recorder here. Hopefully we can get your voice. We've been trying to communicate with the person who seems to spend a lot of time in the kitchen, pantry, and scullery area. If this is you, we can sometimes pick you up on this camera. Don't worry about the light. Hopefully it doesn't scare you. But we do have some devices here that you can touch. They won't hurt you. It's like it's giving someone a bath. There's two. There's two. It's something small and like an adult and yeah. a child. And they're right by the bathtub. That is, that's a child's bathtub. Child tub. Oh, we're done. Sorry, but at least we got that. Yeah. <laughs> Power out. Yeah. Good night.
people really do benefit from knowing the past and knowing the context where they live. That if we really do acknowledge the fact that the spirits of our ancestors and others are, are all around, and that they're there not to harm us necessarily, um, in fact in some cultures they're there to help us, I think that's a little healthier. People understanding their environment and maybe the, the paranormal environment as well is actually a very healthy thing and not something to be frightened of.